Welcome to Google Cloud Drawing Board, where we doodle our way through the cloud. Today's topic, what is Google Kubernetes Engine? This video is divided into chapters. Watch the full video or skip ahead to any section of your choice. Now, Sam, the sysadmin, calls Erin, the developer. Her application has crashed, but it worked just fine on her workstation. They check the logs, debug stuff, and eventually find version inconsistencies. The right dependencies were missing in production. No surprise there. Together, they perform a risky rollback. We'll later install the missing dependencies and hope nothing else breaks. Aaron and Sam decide to fix the root problem once and for all using containers. Containers decouple the OS from the application dependencies and the code. Due to this abstraction, Sam can log into each machine and instruct it to run Aaron's containers. It will pull down just the files that have changed since the last container and run the new code. If you need to roll back, all the old files are still there as container images are immutable. By using containers, Aaron and Sam solved the it worked on my machine problem. Containers help improve portability, shareability, deployment speed, reusability, and more. Turns out Sam's responsible for more developers than just Aaron. With large number of developers containerizing their apps, Sam needs a better way to orchestrate all the containers that these developers are shipping. Solution? Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a portable, extensible, open source platform for managing containerized workloads and services. But turns out, Kubernetes is not that simple to manage from installation to provisioning to upgrades, SLAs, and scaling. So, Sam looks into Google Kubernetes Engine. GKE is a managed service for running Kubernetes. Apart from making it easy for you to create clusters, it offers some advanced cluster management features, including load balancing, auto-scaling, auto-upgrades, auto-repairs, logging, monitoring, and more. Now, how does GKE work? All Kubernetes objects in your containerized app run on top of a cluster, which is the foundation of GKE. Cluster consists of at least one control plane and one or more machines called nodes, which are created during the cluster creation process. The control plane includes the Kubernetes API server, scheduler, storage, and core resource controllers. The control plane is responsible for deciding what runs on all the cluster's nodes. This can include scheduling workloads, managing networks, storage, lifecycle, scaling, and upgrades. Now, the nodes. A node runs the services necessary to support the containers that make up your cluster's workloads. These include the container runtime and the Kubernetes node agent, Kubelet, which communicates with the control plane and is responsible for starting and running containers scheduled on that node. Pods are the smallest, most basic deployable objects in Kubernetes and contain one or more containers. Pods also contain shared networking and storage resources for their containers. Now, how do you use GKE? We know that GKE works with containerized apps, so before you deploy a workload on GKE cluster, you must first package it into a container. To create a continuous integration and continuous delivery pipeline, you can use Cloud Code to write your apps, send the code to a source code repository, which kicks off a build process in Cloud Build, leading to container images, which can then be stored in container registry, ready to be deployed in GKE. You can then create the GKE cluster using Cloud Console UI, GCloud Command Line Interface, or the API. KubeCTL CLI comes pre-installed in Cloud Shell to run commands against your Kubernetes clusters. High Availability and Scaling For availability, you can choose between two types of clusters, zonal and regional. Regional clusters are better suited for HA because they have multiple control planes across multiple zones in a region, while zonal clusters have one control plane in a single zone. This also means that changes to cluster config takes longer in a regional cluster because they must propagate across all control planes. Due to these trade-offs, choose regional clusters when availability is more important than flexibility and choose zonal cluster to create or upgrade clusters rapidly when availability is less of a concern. GKE also provides four types of auto-scaling for workloads and infrastructure. Horizontal pod auto-scaler for adding and removing pods based on utilization metrics like CPU and memory. Vertical pod auto-scaler for sizing your pods. Cluster Autoscaler for adding and removing nodes based on the scheduled workload. 
node auto provisioning for dynamically creating new node pools with nodes that match the needs of your user's pods. How to secure your app using GKE? GKE is secure by default with automatic data encryption at rest and in transit. The OS images you deploy are Google certified. You can access your clusters without public IP on the internet and you can control access using identity and access management and role-based access controls. Additionally, with GKE, you get trusted networking. Using global VPC, you can connect to and isolate clusters. Using global load balancing, you can deploy public services behind a single global Anycast IP. Using Cloud Armor, you get easy protection against Layer 7 and DDoS attacks. And using networking policies, you can control the communication between your cluster pods. GKE also comes with tools to verify, enforce, and improve the security of your infrastructure. You get binary authorization to ensure only properly signed containers are deployed to production. Vulnerability scanning of the container images finds security vulnerabilities early on in the CI-CD pipeline. And since the base images are managed, they are automatically patched and updated for security vulnerabilities. With all that said, if you are looking to quickly start with containers, check out GKE at cloud.google.com slash Kubernetes engine.